everyone. Uh, we're here together uh, for a workshop on event greening. And that's me, uh, Kale Black. So I'm the Senior Program Coordinator for Burlington Green. And we're just going to walk you through today um, some basics of greening your event. Next. Awesome. So we always like to start with a land acknowledgement. Um, and what we are trying to do now is just make them a little bit more like organic and personal as we are doing them. So we have our um, official land acknowledgement here on screen, but I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on what this means in regards to like event greening and how I see uh, the work that we're doing in terms of waste diversion and reducing our impact on the earth as part of our actions for truth and reconciliation. Um, that part of honoring the lands and the plants and the waters and the animals is the work that we're doing. And I try to at least incorporate that in all of the aspects of event greening that we're doing. It's not just for the solid waste that we're diverting, it's really for the general respect for Mother Earth and honoring the caretakers that have taken care of these beautiful lands that we have the pleasure of living, working and playing on um, currently. So um, acknowledging all of those things and um, incorporating them into our approach for event greening. Next. So just covering a few of the things that we can expect today, we tried to break it down into a simple agenda. So we're um, first just doing our introductions uh, and some of us are online, a couple of us are in person. Um, after the introductions, I have Event Greening 101, which will take uh, likely the bulk of our presentation. That's uh, most of the content that I'll be presenting. And then of course, we have some time for Q&A. So whether you're online and you wanna type in your questions um, or anyone in the room is feeling, uh, feeling called to ask ask anything, we have some open space that you can just ask any questions if anything wasn't clear, or you just have questions about things that we didn't cover. And of course, finishing it with just what you can expect uh, from Burlington Green in regards to our offerings. Uh, but one of our offerings is this presentation today. So we want to be able to share this information for anybody who wants to green their event, um, because it is a growing requirement and it is becoming a lot more popular. And a lot of people are really interested in in greening it, but it's a new concept or a new idea for them, and it can seem really overwhelming. And I've been involved in events, uh, maybe uh, you can click the next slide, um, I've been involved in events for quite some time, both in an event greening capacity and as a lead event organizer. And I can say, um, do you want to skip one and then we'll go back to this one, um, as an event organizer, and I just know uh, all of the different aspects of event planning that are involved. And for an event organizer, maybe the idea of adding like something else onto it um, seems a little bit overwhelming and it can be a bit taxing for our brains. So I would just love in this presentation to hopefully break it down so that it can be as simple and digestible as possible. Um, and there's some people who are just looking for information. So hopefully this presentation uh, gives you all of the answers that you would like. Um, Okay, now, do you wanna go back one more? And just for our introductions, we have one event organizer in the room with us, and um, maybe if we wanted to take turns, if the people that are in the room wanted to introduce themselves. Um, but I just have some questions, uh, simple ones. What event are you representing? Who are you here representing? And then the second thing is, what is the reason you're here today? Um, and it seems like a simple question, but if you can think about it in the terms of like, why are you interested in event greeting? Like what has been the inspiration for you to come with the cup to receive the information? Um, what, and hopefully it's more than a have to, uh, but if that's the answer, just tell us, because honesty is great too. Um, so did you want to start maybe and introduce yourself, what event you're from and what inspired you to be here? Okay, thank you. My name is Elizabeth Medina and my event is Burlington Latino Festival. Cool. In September. Awesome. And it's the first year for the Latino yes. Festival, right? Excellent. And what has inspired your presence here at our um, workshop today? Okay. Huh. <laughs> my English is my second language. <laughs> uh, no worries. Can you please repeat my... Yeah, just like what's the reason you would like to um, be more eco-friendly yeah, in your event? The, yeah. the green is very important for us. Perfect. Everything is very, very important. Awesome. And I would say that's probably like a very common answer, hopefully. Um, and there just seems to be a little bit of like um, 
a gap in the middle because there's a lot of interest and I find most people if you ask them like would you like to reduce the eco impact of your event it'd be very rare for someone to say no um, but there seems to be just a little bit of gap between like the um, inspiration to do it and actually having it materialize um, so yeah hopefully you can tell us after if this was helpful for it but thank you so much um, and then anyone who's leading the online space if you can so yeah, at this time, uh, anyone uh, that is in an event, maybe I'll call on uh, Carlene first. I see you're there. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself and what event you're from. Hi, my name is Carlene and or Vanda. Um, my events that I do are called Craft Live or Afro Caribbean Fetch or Waterfront Fetch. It's in Oakville um, and Burlington, hopefully again one day. Um, so I just am interested, obviously. Um, you know, in finding out the best practices um, to do this. Um, I have had to pay the echo fee, um, you know, to have people um, do things in my event, like in terms of cleaning up and stuff like that. So I just wanted to get some more information on, on ideas of how to do that uh, effectively myself. And um, yeah, just try to incorporate that. I also have a youth group that I just started um, and looking for volunteer opportunities for them so I wanted to know you know how I can incorporate that into my event hopefully have some youth involved in some of these things. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks Carly and then Carmen to introduce yourself. Hello uh, my name is Carmen Guevara I'm from uh, Bowling for Latin Festival on August the 24th. Um, I'm joining this meeting because I think it's so, so important because uh, um, this is our first uh, festival and we need to take care of all the, the recycling stuff. And also, I think it's so important because we need to share with the vendors as well to explain them a little bit more how the involvement is managing the, the recycled things and how we can get more information about uh, too long, like uh, an organized festival. Awesome. That's great. That's all Okay, that's sweet. So I would say just a few of the things I heard are like best practices, um, which I put like as many as we have in here. And I'll just share that like they're our best practices. And over the years, we've been doing event greening for about 16 years. Um, and our best practices have evolved. So I'm assuming they will continue to evolve and we'll learn different tips and tricks and we'll get better and better. But what we're sharing with you today is like our current best practices that we have. Um, and for Carmen, we do have a couple things that deal with vendors as well, which I heard that you mentioned. So thank you so much. And just a brief introduction about myself. Who am I and why am I leading this workshop for you today? Um, I'll just share briefly like my eco journey. So I took eco studies in high school at Aldershaw I did the RBG Eco Studies program, um, and that was like the sort of lights on um, experience for me that was like, oh, wow, climate change. And that was the same year Al Gore's and Inconvenient Truth came out. Um, so I just became very like stressed and worried about the state of our environment, um, which led me to looking for different volunteer opportunities locally. I found Burlington Green and through a series of things ended up volunteering with them eventually working for them um, but this lady right here her name's barbara french and she was actually the um person who started the recycling program at Ribfest in 2004. Um, so she is a recycling pioneer here in Burlington. She also helped with the Sound of Music Festival's original eco team. Um, and I just personally feel like event greening would not be what it is in the community. And I would not be doing this if it wasn't for Barbara French. And her inspiration was attending Ribfest with her two like newborn twins and seeing the massive amount of waste that was being produced at that event and just realizing she had to do something. So we started with her in 2008 and I became obsessed immediately um, because I just had all of this energy and like enthusiasm and I had nowhere to put it um, and I volunteered at Ribfest eco team I did my first three hours and I filled up two of those green totes and one of the blue totes and then you actually saw the truck come and pick it up along the promenade and dump it in and there aren't that many environmental actions where you have such like a oh like immediate impact so I like 
just spent the rest of the weekend there and was obsessed and was like, take me to your leader. And they brought me to Barbara French and she just basically started tutoring me, mentoring me. Um, and everything I have learned from event greening is on the job experience. So it is from mentors who have been doing event greening that pretty much anyone who's doing event greening is willing to share the knowledge because we just want everyone to be doing this. So hopefully this workshop is really helpful. Um, and I personally have greened over 80 events here in Burlington, which is a little wild to um, think of. I think it's over 40 tons of waste we've been able to divert. And just a huge shout out to Barbara. That one year of Ribfest, we diverted 38.54 um, tons. So it's taken us 14 years to get the same amount of waste diversion that she did in that one festival. She's just an icon and a legend, and I like to shout her out whenever I can. Um, and yeah, I've recruited volunteers. I've just done this a lot, and I, I, I really care about it, and I like to talk about it. So that's that. What's next? So this is the Waste Diversion 101 component, and these are just some of the different topics that we're going to be talking about, and I just tried to break it down into um, what would be involved in waste diversion in general. And I'm sure at some point you'll have access to these slides um, and the recording, so if there's ever anything I'm sharing that's like too quick, A, you can ask me again for clarification in the questions, but this recording will be available for you to refresh your memory. So um, working with Halton Region is very important because they're the ones who are going to be managing your waste. Just a point of clarification for anyone who doesn't know, uh, municipalities in Halton do not handle solid waste. That's a regional um, aspect and service. So it's Halton Region that runs the event greening services and waste diversion uh, for all of the events that happen within the region. Um, tips for recruiting eco-team volunteers, uh, that's often a, a pressure point, is finding people specifically for the eco-team. We just have a little tips around that. And without going into all of them, I'm going to cover them each, but that's generally what we're going to cover. So we can go to the first one, which is working with Halton Region. And I tried to, at first, I just put like, fill out the forms six weeks in advance, but I figured it would be helpful to just take you through what each of the pages of the forms looks like. Because in my understanding, it's just a very overwhelming process when you're looking at the entire thing together. And hopefully by us walking you through the different steps today, you realize at the end like, oh, like it's a lot of work, but it's not rocket science. It's like it's you just control the waste that's being given out. You supervise how it's disposed of and you can get 80 plus percent waste diversion um, without oversimplifying it, but it is really, it can be that simple. Um, yeah, do you wanna click to the next one? Um, and then I think, yeah, so this is just the first page and all I did to get here, and you'll see in the presentation, there's like the link here for recycling waste, like how to get to this actual form, but you can just Google community events, Halton region waste, and you'll see this request form show up. And there's just six different pages and they request six weeks in advance for your event. So it's very important you don't leave this to the last minute um, because they're not required to help you if you are within that six weeks. I can say like they have been great and helped us when we have been short of that window, but obviously they prefer to have a larger span and they can't guarantee that the totes will even be available unless you give them enough notice. Um, so uh, I'll just walk, very simple, you click these boxes, read the things. Do you wanna click the next one? Um, pretty simple, but the main points I wanted to point out for this one that might be a little ooh for someone is the drop off location for the carts um, and I just look at my site plan. So you just look at it. I, we did an event at Mountainside Park for anyone who knows what that is. And we just pulled up a Google map images uh, because Google maps is great. You can look at any pretty much venue that's outdoors and get a good uh, site plan. And then general location. And then I just, in that Google map, just like edited a little circle over where I wanted to drop the bins. Pretty simple. And they will also pick them up at that same location. Um, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Do you want to click the next sheet? Also pretty self-explanatory, but just demystifying the process. How do they contact you? You can click the next one. Um, so number of blue carts for recycling and green carts for organics. That is something that you're going to have to estimate your first year. Um, so one thing that can help with the um, 
estimate is if you've ever done the event before and you have the amount of solid waste that you've collected at that event, um, which you would know because if you paid for a private hauler, they charge you based on the weight. Um, so you can estimate based on the figures I give you in the later chart about how much green and blue totes would be filled based on the estimates. It's pretty good to bump it up at least 20% just to be sure. And then I always do an analysis after the event because you'll be aware that like, okay, we ordered 20 bins, 16 of them were full of green, 12 of them are filled with blue. I can probably reduce my order for next year. But I would say whatever you're thinking, especially if it's your first year, try and bump it up by 20% because you're not exactly sure. And it's just better. I've run out of totes before. It's not the best situation. Um, other things is a front end cardboard bin requested. That's something you're going to have to think about for your event. Um, so if we're doing big festivals like the Canada Day or um, something where there's a lot of vendors, mostly that's from the boxes from like their products. Um, so it's like food vendors, all the boxes of like onions and stuff like that. Um, so just have an analysis generally of what kind of vendors you're going to have. You should have a general idea of what kind of garbage is going to be produced based on those vendors. Um, and it isn't an extra charge, but it is... Um, I'm sure not ideal if you order it and then you end up not using it. Um, because if you're not expecting a lot of waste, you can put that cardboard into your blue bin. Um, so there are ways around that there. And then they also offer some put waste in its place signs, which are just those chloroplast signs that you see in front of most of the waste diversion bins and they just have recycling garbage compost. So you can put that inside or actually tie them right on the totes. And they have some pictures that you can see as an example. Um, and it's great, they provide those for you and then you just obviously have to give them back with the totes when they're done. Uh, but they provide you the totes, the signage and even a front end cardboard bin. Next slide, please. Um, so waste diversion plan. This one is very important because the Halton region will not rent you the totes unless you have an event greening team. Um, and basically that just means you need at least one person on your team who's going to be in charge of that. Um, and I find, to be honest, it's really great if you can have a dedicated person. I have, uh, for larger events like the Sound and Music Festival, Rib Fest, they have a whole team of people working on it. But if you're one event organizer and you don't have a team, uh, you might be that contact for event greening. It just is ideal if you can have someone whose primary job is to do that. Um, yeah, and then you tell them what sort of the thing is. And I'll sh when I explain way stations later, this will make a little bit more sense and you'll have a better idea of which one you'll be uh, set up. And we have ideal suggestions, but it all depends on your event and your setup as well. Uh, next slide, please. And I just missed, there's there behind, uh, you can just keep it on this one, but there was a little thing that says, uh, and you have to do it, there's also Halton Region provides free training for your volunteers. So in order for them to give you the totes and lend them to you, you have to organize a training with your volunteers. They're available on evenings and weekends, they'll do it for you. I've heard really great things and generally the people uh, that get hired for Halton Region to do these presentations are pretty passionate about waste, so they're um, great educators on this. So uh, we'll talk later and you'll see that Burlington Green has consultation services and we also have full event greening service. Um, however, if you're just looking for how to do it, like this presentation should lead you through most of it. And then if you order the bins through Halton Region, Halton Region will train your team of volunteers on how to sort the stuff properly. Um, next slide is I believe for volunteers and just volunteer recruitment and management. Um, I just really like this picture. This was at the Burlington Performing Arts Center. And I also thought it was funny that as I was selecting all the photos from these, it's like 16 years and I have just um, varying levels of hair <laughs> throughout the like photo story here. Um, I don't know what was going on at that point, but, <laughs> uh, but this was a great team of volunteers. And I would say like in general, Burlington Green, we attract people who care about the earth. Um, so most of it, it's like adjacent to doing sort of things like this. Uh, but for general event uh, volunteers, and I just remember like I worked at McDonald's and it's just with the general public and some people um, just have a weird phobia around garbage. I guess it makes sense, like similar to spiders and stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, 
it's just garbage. And like at these events, like people just made it. Uh, so it's not like it's old stinky garbage or stuff like that. Um, but you will attract like a certain kind of volunteer. Um, and for people who are just having sort of general volunteers, uh, we have tips. Uh, so if you go to the next one, one of our suggestions is just the way that you describe the volunteer position. Um, so for example, like when I used to sign up for the Sound and Music Festival, they had like eco team sort and eco team something else that wasn't sort. But it was basically specifically saying, like, you're opening bags of garbage and sorting them by hand, which is something we must admit, like, seven out of eight people most likely would not be interested in, especially, like, they're volunteering to do it for free. Um, and those people, generally for events, like community, I'm speaking generally, but a lot of those people are volunteering, uh, young people for service hours. So they're not specifically, like, Everyone wants to make the community better, but we just have to acknowledge if they're doing it for an exchange for hours, they might not have the motivation that the previous volunteers had. Um, so A, that's about how you set up the way stations, which I'll talk to you guys in about uh, in, a, in a moment, but also how you describe the volunteer position. So one of the things that we put in our descriptions uh, recently is doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, extensive hand sorting of waste is not required. Um, we've moved away from that. We generally don't do that. COVID was very interesting for us adjusting sort of how we deal with things. But um, this will be available in the presentation. And really, just one of the key factors, we stopped uh, calling it almost anything but like eco ambassadors. Um, so if you would like to be an eco ambassador, you're responsible for like uh, being a spokesperson for the earth at the event, which will attract certain people. And then part of the jobs, um, it's not as focused around waste, it's more focused around education and being like an educator for the environment uh, for the attendees at your event. Um, yeah, so there's just some information here and you can look at it um, later in the slides and stuff. Offer volunteer hours, obviously. Um, and one of the things, two just key things uh, for, for volunteers is uh, guidance offices in high schools are great centers for high school students looking for volunteer hours. So most high school students that need hours will go to their guidance office as their first step. And then a guidance office uh, teacher or a counselor is generally aware of the different volunteer opportunities in the community. So when a student approaches them needing hours, having your event of, of, like as a piece of awareness for that guidance counselor can be very helpful. And without providing you that information, you can literally just Google uh, high schools in your community and their guidance office number is normally on the website and they're used to these sorts of things and it's something they're looking for like they're looking for volunteer opportunities to offer their students so um, their emails are on the website if it's not on the website you can call the front office and just ask like uh, can I have the email for the guidance counselor I have a volunteer opportunity to share as simple as that volunteer Halton is also a really really excellent resource and Burlington Green ourselves gets a large amount of the volunteers that we recruit uh, through Volunteer Halton, because again, that's just a specific place that people go when they're looking for volunteer opportunities. And they're not all high school students either. Like people look for just ways to give back through Volunteer Halton. So that could be a great way to find people. Um, next slide, please. Cool, so setting up waste stations. And I put a few different photos here of uh, two different kinds of waste stations. Um, and the first one over here is an outdoor event. This one is an indoor event. So it's a little bit different of a setup. And the difference for, uh, another difference for them is this waste station, you'll see like they're similar. We have recycling, compost, there's a garbage back there and the same sort of thing. Um, this one, the reason it's a little different is that's a liquids bucket. Um, that is also important uh, because when people are bringing you drinks and beverages, they often still have some liquid in it. And just for the long-term cleanliness of the event and the volunteers, you want as little liquid in those bins as possible. Um, and just, um, especially outdoor events in the summer, it can attract bees and wasps. So that's something because it's a lot of sugary drinks. People are pouring in it. And if you have it separate in a bucket, you can go pour it somewhere else. There's normally a gray water bin that you have for an event. Uh, you want to pour it obviously in the right places. But if you pour them right in the green bins, then you're just putting the sugar in there and then it's attracting the bees throughout. I can say in 16 years, we've had one person be stung by a bee. It's kind of their fault. Um, it's, 
they're my good friends, so I feel like it's okay that I <laughs> said that. Um, but yeah, there, even though there's been lots of bees around, we haven't had any stings. So it's just, but I get it too. As soon as I see them, I like I freak out. So that's just one preventative thing that you can do. And then one of the things that's different about this bin is people put the stuff directly in that. So you'll see me and this lovely gentleman are standing behind the bins. And how those generally operate is I say it's like a three-part um, interaction. You have intercept, educate, and appreciate. So it's almost like goaltending. If you imagine that you're like protecting your goal and like these are the nets that people would um, try and like score their points on. And it's very interesting, your awareness of human behavior as you're watching or witnessing or supervising a waste station. Because when there's a human present, people have this thing of like, they know they're there, but they'll like, like avoid eye contact and then just dunk it in real fast and then sort of scurry away. And that sort of people, it's indicative of their general beliefs about waste. And there's a slight guilt that they have that like, we don't really think about throwing stuff out, but when there's someone in a green shirt standing behind there, you're suddenly more self-conscious and you're like, well, I don't know what I feel bad about it. And it's, that's part of the intercept is like breaking that ice right away. We're all at an event, we're all creating garbage. It's something that we do as like human beings currently in our society. And if we just take the stigma away and we do it properly, which means like we just put the stuff in the right spot, it doesn't need to be a sticky, weird interaction. So the intercept is very important because it's like, what do you got there? Ma'am, 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 ma'am. And like, I'm pretty uh, interactive. <laughs> with the people, but I've also had a lot of customer service training and years and years and years of beating out any embarrassment of myself. So there are people that are much more quiet that will run the way stations and that's okay. It's a great practice sort of thing for them. Uh, but as an example for that, we try and generally pair people. So if we have someone who's a little bit quieter, we'll try and pair them with someone who's maybe a little bit more comfortable. Um, and then that's also something for way stations. Even though one trained person can lead a way station by themselves fine and um, I enjoy it. It's just a little bit more fun for general volunteers if they have a partner with them. So that's just one consideration. You'll also want to consider if it's outdoors to make sure if you can, you're going to look at the site plan and do it strategically. Uh, but shade is a big um, component because if you're standing out in the sun for hours at a time, it can just not be the safest for volunteers. So there's ways around that. We have umbrellas that we use that are weighted down and stuff like that. Tents are the most ideal, but tents can also be cost prohibitive for some different events. So um, just think about those things. And even if you can set it up under a tree, um, there's lots of different ways around that. But I generally just try and think about the um, volunteer experience. And especially for you guys as event organizers, I try and put myself in that situation because one of the things that we have found, and it's um, not uncommon, not super common either, is people think that like, oh, if I get volunteers, they're just gonna manage the waste and I don't really have to think about it. And just if you think about like, you're not using volunteers to clean up your mess. You want them to have like a good experience. You want a supervisor to be present with them. You want them to feel cared for and have the things that they need as a volunteer, just like the rest of your volunteers. Um, and especially if you want them to return again, you want them to have a good experience. And generally we do feedback surveys, like 90 plus percent of them have a spectacular time. Um, and it's a very eye shifting uh, experience to witness the waste. Cause normally it's just us and we'd put our little thing, but when you're standing there and you see it, um, and then you're able to divert it well. It can be a, a very eye-opening experience. So um, this is when people put it in and the person is behind them directing it. And then the other option here is you'll see that there's like a um, little L of tables and they're on the inside of it. So this was at the Burlington Performing Arts Center. Honestly, a little bit crazy that they gave us such nice tablecloths because by the end, they're like, there's just so much garbage on them. Um, but these ones are really great too because the people would come up to us and then they put the waste on the table. Or you'll see right there, there's a green cart and they would just be like, all right, just put it in there or put it in there. And then when that's full, they could take it and put it right in the bin. So that guarantees no contamination at all and guarantees that the volunteers won't have to sort of touch as much. They just have to empty the bins into the larger bins. And something I didn't mention is Halton Region, when you order the bins, you can get the bins, the cardboard bins, and they also have little busing 
bins now, which you think of just when people are busing tables and putting them in. So people would generally now, at a lot of different events, they do it in a lot of events in Oakville, they would have recycling garbage and compost little trays on the table and then volunteers to manage it. So it's sort of an in-between of that and honestly that's probably the way that we will continue to move towards. Because um, then if there's contamination, it's in a little tiny tray and it's easy to take out. Whereas opposed to this, um, if something goes in there, you need a garbage picker to like sort of sort out. Um, so this can solve a lot of those problems and you're just gonna have to see based on your event like what is logistically possible. Um, but those are at least two plus different options that are available. Let me see, was there anything else I wanted to cover from way stations? Oh, I just, like location is extremely important. Um, and the other thing with that is we take away all other waste receptacles possible. If it's at a public event, it's a public park, it's a little bit harder and sometimes we've just covered the bins like out on the promenade so people can't use them. But the idea is you want, if someone has waste to dispose of, they're going to one of these stations. Because again with human behavior, if they're looking like someone's going to judge me here, someone's going to judge me here, I can just put it in this bin over here and then keep it moving, that bin's going to be overflowing and then it will keep the people from interacting with the waste stations. And part of what we're doing, it's not just the immediate waste diversion, it's a culture shift. And every time someone interacts with one of those booths and then they go like, ooh, hesitant to like, ah. Like, that's the goal. We want the society to just, this is normal. This is the way that we're moving and it'll be very strange if they go to an event and there isn't event greening like this. Um, so location is very important, the different types of setup, removing the other bins. Um, yeah, and I would just say a general rule of thumb is you should always have a waste station within eyesight because that's just general for event planning. You want a garbage bin within eyesight because that's people behavior. If they look around and they can't see anything, if there's any other litter already, people just will generally sort of toss it. So you want it to, if it's a large event and there's three waste stations, they'll probably be decently spread out, but they should be within eyesight and signage is very important whenever you can direct people or just make them as visible as possible and speak about them. If you have like the podium announcements, you're doing pre-event promotions, you're educating people about the event in any way, this should be part of the event that is being educated about. Um, and then like uh, Carmen was saying on there, when the vendors become more familiar with it, um, it could be something the vendors assist you with as well, that they know that like if anyone's looking for waste disposal like oh yeah there's a waste station here there's a waste station here and I have really not had any experience of someone witnessing the system and not being like wow this makes a lot of sense and this should be the way we do things um, it just makes sense when you do it and it catches on and it's one of those things I heard one of my mentors say that like rather than fight the old paradigm you create a new one and it's so obvious that people will naturally gravitate towards it. Um, so, yeah. Next slide. <laughs> Perfect, so this is the green vendor agreement. You probably can't read much of this because it's pretty small text, but I just wanted to put it here in its entirety so you could see it. Um, and this is something that's available for free on our Burlington Green website, and I believe the city has it in your, um, what, yeah, the pipeline, it's in the pipeline. Um, so it's basically just something that we prepare and um, this was I think cobbled together by a whole bunch of other ones, but it's basically an agreement we get all of the vendors to sign in order to be a part of the event. And if Burlington Green is working with an event uh, to do event greening, we will not do it unless there is a green vendor agreement in place. And part of the reason is because we don't wanna clean up garbage that doesn't need to be there in the first place. Um, and even if it's a service and we're being hired to do it, we don't want to just be waste disposal. It's about like changing the shifting society, increasing the education in people's minds. Um, there's a lot more to it than just waste diversion. And this is something that really does strongly shift culture because um, this has like financial ties. It has, it's really, practical. Um, so basically, it just indicates, summarizing this, you can't serve anything that is not in compostable or recyclable packaging. You are not able to serve styrofoam. You cannot have plastic straws. You cannot serve plastic water bottles. And that all sounds great if it's just demands, but if it's demands without the actual resources on where to get it, 
it's a little rude in my opinion. So like we have the green vendor agreement and saying like you have to have these sorts of products and you have to, if you're serving ice cream, it has to be in compostable cups. If you're um, serving your brisket, whatever, it's gotta be in these compostable containers. And what's really great is Sound and Music Festival Ribfest Canada Day uh, already incorporates these green vendor agreements and those are the three biggest festivals in Burlington. So if a vendor is used to doing events in Burlington, they've probably seen this before. It's not out of the blue. Um, most of them will understand it. And one thing I'll say that's important is equal application and um, I don't, penalties isn't the right word, but enforcement. It needs to be equal across the board because I have been to events where vendors would come up to me as like the event greeting coordinator and be like, I spent more money on this and I see that this vendor over here hasn't. So if it's not being enforced for the vendor who hasn't, it feels a little bit off to the person who is doing it. So if you're gonna have an agreement and not enforce it, um, probably better than nothing, but it really should be equally enforced so that all the vendors feel like it's a fair playing field. Um, anything else that I want to cover about that? Um, yeah, just one thing that would be really great is if you have vendors that are specifically doing exemplary with it, so you just know like, wow, they've really thought about this, like not just the packaging, but maybe they put a little bit of education on it, or maybe they uh, like they have fair trade stuff or organic stuff too. Like if you can have any sort of additional recognition for vendors that are doing really good on the eco aspects, it's the whole like carrot versus stick that like you sort of need a stick, but you also need a carrot. Because if you're not going to recognize people for their good work that they're doing, um, I don't know, it just doesn't feel as good. And people appreciate a little like, yeah, good job. And then we all feel great about it. And it's also just sets the stage for the event that like, these are the things that we care about um, and we will celebrate them. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, preparing bins for pickup, so just very quickly, uh, the obvious ones, and they'll probably cover this in the Halton region training, but you don't want the bins to be too heavy. And the compost ones can get heavy very quickly. Um, let's say it's like a, the, the onion vendor just has a whole bunch of scrap, like those, they get pretty heavy. So just think that there's humans on the other end of that that have to wheel them and like move them. So you just don't want to hurt anyone along the process. And I just try and remember there's human beings behind every level of this process at Halton region. The attendees are everyone deserves uh, to be treated with a little bit of thoughtfulness. Uh, final check of contents. Obvious. You just scan at least the tops of them and try and do like a good sort, get rid of any contamination that's there. Um, I always put tape on the top of the bins once we're done the event, because normally the event's done at four, six, seven, and then they're there overnight. The Halton region doesn't do evening pickup. So your bins are at least there overnight for one night normally. And just the public, Anytime you leave anything out, it's like, oh, cool. And they toss their stuff in there. So one thing, don't use duct tape. They don't like that for obvious reasons. It leaves marks on the bins and they have to clean that off. So like clear tape um, just to keep it down. And if someone really wants to get in, they're going to get in. But just that little bit of um, it just is a little due diligence. Um, and yeah, think of their trucks and accessibility. Um, oh, so so for that, when you're picking up the bins, like let's say um, I just think when I'm looking at the venue, a truck has to come in and pick up the bins from where they are. So I try and leave them close to a curbside or something uh, like at the City of Burlington events, they're fenced in, which is great. And I can put them right on the other side of the curb, but just close to where a truck would have access. Because if they're in the middle of a field, people have to go and get those bins and then bring them to the curbside where the truck is so that they can dump those out. So just try and be thoughtful and Halton Region obviously appreciates it and they're offering the service for free. So good to be nice to them. Next slide, please. Ooh, it's very important. We need to cover it again. Yeah. Um, receiving results and diversion number. So this is just um, a reference that uh, Halton Region used to be able to give you the weight and they'd say like, oh, they gave you this much of green and this much of blue. Um, they don't offer that anymore. And I think partially because they'll collect stuff from multiple events at once. So it's they can't collect it and then weigh it and then collect it and then weigh it. So this is just a general um, average. 
um, and it's just what we were given from the Halton region. So it's just something that's helpful for communicating your success after. If you know you got 15 and a half blue bins, you can just do the math and estimate the kilograms. If you know you got whatever green bins, same thing. It's not a perfect science, but this is the average rates. And like she said, it's from five years ago, but she also says waste is waste. So, yeah. You know, waste is, yeah, you wouldn't think so. Um, so next slide, please. Tell your story, share your success. I feel like this is pretty obvious, but it's again just part of the culture shift that you don't want to do eco-friendly things and not talk about them. Um, I believe that like having conversations about helping the earth are one of the most important things that keeps it active in our minds. It's like a fresh thing. We are in a climate emergency. It's very serious, but also when things are very serious and overwhelming, we tend to compartmentalize them. So it's like, oh yeah, that burning thing over there, everything is fine. Um, so like the more we're having these conversations, the better better it is for our society in general. So do the awesome eco things and then tell people about it. Post about it, share the story. Um, everyone needs to hear it. And it's also very successful on social media. People love to see action. Next slide, please. Um, transportation tips, very, very quickly. Um, just cycling, transit, carpooling. Um, promoting active transportation whenever you can. It's something that we don't often think about um, when we're talking about event greening because it's a lot focused on waste. Um, but having a place that is designated for people to lock up their bikes. Um, there's been certain events in Spencer Smith where they have a bike corral where it's literally like a, one of those metal fences that they set up for festivals, but it's just in a square. And then people come in and then it's all people locking their bikes all on the inside. So there's like a designated place and it's just saying like our event welcomes and encourages public transportation, active transportation. And when you get here, there'll be a safe place for you to lock up your bike. Um, transit, that seems obvious, but just including, including that in your event promotions and on your website that um, showing people the easy way to do it. So even um, like if you're, if there's any comfort on your team with social media, like even having a screen recording of you Google mapping your ride from like somewhere in Burlington to your event so that people understand like, oh, if I want to get to transit, I can just put it in Google. There's a lot of people who just don't, they haven't done that before. So if you can both promote it and find a way to just put the tools in there for them, because there is on the city of Burlington website, there's a video for how to put your bike on a, on a city bus. And that might be helpful for your website. So like maybe you have a shuttle to get to the place, but you can put some information on how to take transit to the place where your shuttle leaves. So a lot of them are from the Burlington Go or from this place, but like here's how to track your transit ride to Burlington Go so you don't half carpool and like drive your car to the place that you take the shuttle to go to the event. And the transit routes are already there. It's just about finding them and promoting them so that anyone who's thinking about taking transit knows exactly how to do it. Um, and then just tell people carpool if they can. Next slide. Um, so I know we only have a few minutes left and I definitely want to get to the Q and A. Um, so I think this was the last one and then I have them. Okay, sweet. So uh, without going super in depth with each of them, but maybe just touching on them and then knowing you can ask questions later is printing on eco-friendly paper and use watermark. This seems obvious if you're doing any printing. Yeah, of course, like if you don't need to print, don't do it. Digital stuff is tree free. Um, but if you are doing printing, uh, FSC certified paper, Forest Stewardship Council certified paper, um, and you can ask any of the print places that you're getting your stuff printed for FSC certified paper. And that just means that the forests were responsibly managed and harvested. Um, and also like with respect to indigenous people, FSC is just a really wonderful certification. Um, so if you can start and Think about it from the zoomed out perspective. It's not just the garbage, but what are all the aspects of your event? And like from the printing, when you're starting to do promotions, what's it printed on? There's some printing companies that can do vegetable based inks, which is really, really great. And also the recommendation to repeat, tell people about it. You should have a watermark that says printed on FSC paper, eco-friendly inks, um, whatever that happens to be. Because again, it's conversation shifting and it makes people think like, Oh, like that's really great. And then maybe they notice it when it's not on another poster. Um, so it's just something we're putting more into public consciousness. Rethink your volunteer t-shirts. Um, I do love a good volunteer t-shirt. I treasure some of them. And I also know there's some of them I don't care about. I'm never going to wear again. 
but they were given to me. So that's just one of the things, rethink them. Do you need them at all? If you do need them, is it something that you can offer to take back if someone doesn't want them? Uh, you can always, if you'd like giving them away and people want them, you can have the option. But then also have the option, there's a lot of people who don't want them and aren't going to use them. Collect them back again. And that leads into the next one, to avoid using dates on materials when not necessary. Obviously, if you're having a poster, you need to put the date on it. So like there's certain things you have to. But if it's a, a t-shirt, like if Latin Fest, you guys are having the event every year, I'm assuming. And if you're going to get volunteer t-shirts, like just if you don't put the 2024 on it, you can use the leftovers again next year. So it's just little things like that, that I've had name tags and lanyards that like the specific thing <laughs> tied out on it. Anytime you can think about if you can use something again. Does the date need to be on this, or is it something we can carry over to future years? Um, incorporate community drop-offs to increase the uh, benefit of the event. This one isn't a direct, in most people's minds, uh, link to the environment, but a lot of the drop-offs could be. Um, so I just think about things because everything is connected. Environmental benefits, social benefits, economic benefits, everything is all tied up in one. And helping the community helps our planet. So if you can, uh, there are already great places that are accepting donations, like the Compassion Society is a great uh, charity here in Halton, and they take clothing, they take food, they take a few other kinds of donations. Um, there's places that you could do like a little um, e-waste drop off or even like Burlington Center has their little TerraCycle zone. Maybe you set up something to take uh, chip bag wrappers that day. But anything you can think of, and if you can work with the actual organization, uh, like when we do our zero waste drop off um, in the spring and the fall, sometimes we have, we work with the Compassion Society and they come and pick up the donations at the end of the day. So it's just one less thing that our volunteers have to do that we'll have the bin out, we'll promote it, we'll tell everyone, bring your clothing donations when you come to the event. And then if they can pick it up, that's great. If you have a volunteer, you can drop it off. They're also a charity, help them out. Um, but that's just one thing. It's They're coming to your event anyway. Is there something they can bring with them that might make the community better? Um, rent reusable utensils and serveware or use Muse. Um, so Muse we're not as familiar with, uh, but there are some events that are happening here in Burlington this year that are using the reusable dishware. Um, and places like Lakeside a la carte, Lakeside Under the Stars, they rent the plates and knives and cutlery and stuff like that, and it's full reusable. Um, Obviously, that's not doable for all events, um, but if it is, try your best to use reusables because obviously, like reduce, reuse, recycle. The disposal is the last option, but if you can like reduce or reuse the shirts, reduce or reuse the cutlery, whatever that is, that's your first plan. Make a plan for your leftovers. Um, there's certain charities here in Burlington. Uh, there's Food for Thought. Did I come up with that? Food for Feed? No, that was at an event. Uh, there's Food for Thought. There's, I think there's one other one that accepts uh, food donations. But if you know that you're going to have some leftovers, which most events do from those 80 events, probably 70 of them, it's just wild. It blows people's minds. I'm used to it. But like full crates of leftover onions, full crates of like pancake batter, full like when the vendors are done the event, it's often like cheaper and easier for them to just get rid of the rest of their stuff as opposed to bringing it back with them and refrigerating it and all that different stuff. So if you have a plan for your leftovers in advance and you have worked and communicated with uh, Food for Life or any of those things, it says like at the end of the thing, we might have a whole bunch of bread or a whole bunch of bottles of whatever. Um, are you open to receiving that? And then you can make that connection. And it just makes sure like it's great that we can put in the compost, but if we can give it to people to actually consume or to use, that's much better. Um, review event giveaways and ensure they're in alignment with the values. That seems obvious, but just little things like we don't think a lot. It's like, oh, it's a keychain, it's a lanyard or whatever. But A, do you need to be giving it away? Um, a lot of people just take things they have no desire for. And then I can't tell you how many times I've been at events and you find hundreds of the event giveaways in the garbage because people will take them and then just toss them as soon as they sort of walked away. So um, do you really need them? And if you're giving them away, does it make sense and is it in alignment with the rest of your festival and event? And if you've chosen that one of your values is like respecting the earth, reducing your eco impact, if you're listening to this, that's probably you. Just take a second thought. 
that like maybe you could do some like seed packets or some compostable pens or there's lots of cool new eco-friendly giveaways that might cost a little bit more but maybe instead of three pieces of landfill destined garbage it's one really good giveaway that will maybe enhance the planet. Avoid plastics, especially plastic bottles. I put it at first as just plastic bottles, but I just thinking about plastic in general, the main reason I put that is like plastic water bottles is a big thing for uh, most events and specifically a lot of them, even if they're not serving it to the public, will give it to their volunteers. And our suggestion is generally like bulk, 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 bulk. So if you get those big coolers, um, you could fill it with water. If you get the big uh, coolers, you could fill it with it water and then do your little Gatorade powder if you want. So like you can have different beverages in them, but encourage all of the volunteers to have reusable containers and have a stack of paper cups for anyone who doesn't bring it. Because obviously you have to make sure you have hydration for the volunteers, um, but you can do that in a way where you can eliminate potentially dozens or hundreds of plastic bottles every time that you use a bulk container instead. Promote vegetarian and vegan food options. Um, that is just purely an environmental um, thing. Uh, one, one third patty of beef, like an Angus burger at McDonald's, takes about 2,300 liters of water. Um, one liter of milk takes about 600 liters of water. Um, and it's about 10 or 15% of the amount of resources in general for a plant-based option than there is for uh, an animal product option. So that's saying, there's already a veg fest. I don't think everything's going to turn into veg fest, but even just making sure you're thoughtful that if you look at the spread of vendors, is there anything that's offering vegan options, vegetarian options, and um, not just from an accessibility standpoint, but the more we incorporate that and encourage it, the better it is for the planet. Um, and that's what we're talking about today. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so maybe if you'd go to the next one, I'll just share the quote and then we can spend as much time on the questions as people would like. Uh, but I just love this quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And the thing that's tied to me for that is one year in Canada Day, I had a team of 14 people in total over two days and we diverted over 90% of the waste from that festival and there was over 50,000 people that attended. It's a lot of numbers, but like 14 people diverted the waste of 50,000 and got about 90% of it diverted from the landfill. So when things seem overwhelming, just know that like a small group of people that are dedicated to just making sure the flow of energy in the event is right, which is like, where does the garbage come from? Where does it go? You really can make a massive difference um, with a relatively small amount of people. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, there's the Q&A section if anyone has any questions. Um, yeah, because we want everyone to be able to do this uh, with ease. So that's part of the offering here today is there's some people who just need a little bit of context and some information. And that's why we like this is being offered for free because if you're just looking for the information, we just want to give it to you. and go out there and do it. Halton Region has it, but sometimes you just need someone to walk you through and be like, here's the different pages. Um, but what we do in general is we have consultation, um, which is very reasonable. Uh, right now, it's at $35 an hour. So it's just like as much time as it takes, you'll just build for whatever, and it might take 15 minutes, might take a, a few hours, but that's me personally, or one of our event greening team members, walking you through the process. So that's like maybe attending one of your meetings and then being there to answer the questions, maybe help you fill out the form to try and figure out where the way stations go. Um, everything I showed you in the slides, basically, to just be there and help to walk you through the process. There's also a, a middle ground between full service where I'll walk you through, and this is all your own team doing it. I'm training your own team of people. This is um, training before the event and also having someone there on the day of your event. So that might be helpful, especially if it's your first time doing it, but you already have your own team of volunteers. You don't need ours. We'll work with your volunteers and someone who you have designated as the event greening lead. Um, so whoever that person is, we want to be accessible to, we want the information to be given. So the goal is hopefully, if we do a really good job the first year, you won't need us. 
the second year. And it's a very untraditional business model, A, because we're a charity, we're not a business. Um, so like, we would love to be out of business and to be completely obsolete because this is just normal and this is what everyone is doing. And you don't need help doing this because it would be weird for you not to do it. Um, but until we get to that point, um, we just want to capacity build as much as possible. So we'll help you lead up to it. We'll also help you lead up and then literally be there to help your supervisor and supervise your team of volunteers. And then there's the full service waste diversion where we pretty much do it all. So we will order the bins. We will help you. Sometimes we order the bins. Sometimes we ask them to order the bins. But um, we'll do that. We'll do our own recruiting for our volunteers. And let's say we set up like three waste stations. Then we'll do, OK, there's three waste stations. We have two different ships of that. We do the training. We do the onboarding. We do all that sort of volunteer stuff. And then um, for both of these, we provide a report card after. So when we're on site, we'll just give you a, a brief report card and say like, ooh, these are really excellent things. Here's some things that maybe could have gone better. Um, those little suggestions. So either one of those, you'll get sort of our, our closing recommendations that are hopefully helpful for the future. But yeah, just to reiterate once more, our intention is to share the knowledge as much as possible. But also knowing that we're a charity, um, we just need to at the least cover our costs in order to do that. Um, so. Yeah, we're happy to work with any events, and hopefully when you learn how easy it is, you can be someone that can share the event uh, information with others as well. Thank you. Thanks, Kale. Yay. I don't see any questions online, so I think we can probably wrap it at that, and then people do have questions. Um, people have a bunch of people said thank you for, for all the information, lots of information, and, and inviting them to the event. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone.